Good day, Grade 5 learners! This is Teacher Pilar, and welcome to another awesome episode of Essential, because learning science is fun! Before we start our lesson, try to find a nice, quiet, and comfortable place in your home where you can focus with your lesson. In this week's lesson, we are going to Discuss the interactions among living things and non-living things in asteroids and intertidal zones. Specifically, we can differentiate biotic and abiotic things. Describe asteroids and intertidal zones. Describe the interactions among living and non-living things in asteroids. Describe the interaction among living and non-living things in intertidal zones. Are you ready? Let's get started. Did you know that an ecosystem is the relationship between biotic and abiotic factors in a certain place? Biotic factors are living organisms that shapes the environment. It includes plants, animals, fungi, microorganisms, and man. That's you! Abiotic factors refers to physical and chemical elements like water, air, soil, sunlight, minerals, and temperature. Let's see if you can classify the words listed below as biotic or abiotic factors. Let's check your work. Great job, kids! Those biotic and abiotic factors can be found in these two places. What are the differences between these two places? The first picture is an example of estuary. Estuaries are bodies of water that are formed when fresh water from the river flows and mixes with salt water from sea or oceans. River water and sea water meet in estuaries. Estuaries have brackish water, a mixture of salty and fresh water. It is also known as the nurseries of the seas. Why do you think it is called the nurseries of the seas? Yes, you're right! Because birds, mammals, and fishes thrive and multiply there. Now let's look at the second picture. Do you know what it is? It is an intertidal zone. Intertidal zone is known as the area where land meets the sea between high tide and low tide zones. Do you want to know what feeding relationship can be found in intertidal zone and estuary? Okay, let's get going! Food chain. It is a series of organisms feed on another organism that transfer energy in the form of food. Food web. It is an interlinked food chain. It consists of two or more chains and contains more organisms compared to a single food chain. In this feeding relationship, organism can be the producer, consumers, and decomposers. Let's understand that producers are organisms that can make their own food. Consumers are organisms that get energy from feeding on plants and other organisms. The composers are organisms that feed on dead animals and waste. Let's try this out. Here's an activity for you. Look at the picture and study the food chain and food web and answer the following question. Come on, let's try! Question number one. Which is the producer in the food chain? Why is it called the producer?
Answer. Algae is the producer because it can produce its own food. Number 2. Why is the small shrimp called primary consumer? Answer, because the shrimp is the first organism that eats the producer. 3. Why is the salmon called secondary consumer? Answer, because the salmon is the second organism that eats the shrimp and the algae. Number 4. Why is the heron called tertiary consumer? Answer, because the heron is the third organism that eats the salmon, shrimp, and algae. Number 5. What does the food chain show? Answer, Heron. And last, number five, what does the illustration shows? Answer, Food Web. You did a great job, everybody. Let's have another activity. This time, we're going to identify the following organism if it is a producer, consumer, or decomposer. Let's check your work. What an awesome job, kids! Let's see what did you get from our lesson. What is an ecosystem? What are the two factors of an ecosystem? What is an estuary? What is an intertidal zone? What are the roles of organisms in the food chain or food web? Do 
great you have learned a lot can you answer the simple question about our lesson number one why is estuary and intertidal zone important to our environment Number two, what will happen if one component of the estuarine ecosystem disappears? For example, if coral reefs disappear, what will happen to the other living organisms? Let's find out if you understand our lesson. I know you can do it. Prepare your pen and paper and answer the following question. Write the letter only. 1. What do you call a biological community where a group of living organisms interact with non-living factors of the environment? A. Biosphere B. Community C. Ecosystem D. Pollution Two, what is an estuary? A. The land area that drains water into a lake, river, or pond. B. The underground system that provides drinking water to an area. C. The large body of salt water that covers most of the Earth's surface. D. The area where a river meets the ocean, where fresh and salt water mix. Question number three. Which of these organisms is at the beginning of food chain? A. Algae B. Heron C. Salmon D. Shrimp Four. What causes the change in salinity of water in estuaries? A. The amount of sunlight B. The hotness and coldness of water C. The continuous flow of fresh and salt water D. The kinds of rocks found in the estuary Question number 5. Which of the following choices includes all abiotic factors? A. Sunlight, algae, temperature. B. Water, sunlight, soil. C. Temperature, trees, animals. D. Sunlight, water, plants. Number 6. Which of these abiotic factors refers to the level of hotness and coldness of water? A. Rocks B. Salinity C. Sunlight D. Temperature Number 7. What do you call the areas of estuaries that provide shelter to thousands of fish? A. Coral reefs B. Mud flats C. Rocky shores D. Salt marshes
Let's check your work. To enrich your knowledge or skills of the lesson learned, write an essay about this picture of an ecosystem. That's a wrap for this episode. This is Teacher Pilar. Until next time, always remember, learning science is essential.